Well, hey there, Internet. How's it going? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com, and come in closer. Like, let me get this light over here so you can really see me because I look like an ominous creature right now in this video. Look, I'm 2,500 miles away from home right now talking about Google I.O. That doesn't mean that it's not time for an awesome dog fight. And to that end, I've got two killer devices here. One is the Sony Xperia Ion. The other one is the Nokia Lumia 900. Two very different phones, but both available at AT&T for a hundred bucks. I'm doing a lot of leaning in this video too. How do you like them apples, America? Um, both are $99, both are awesome devices. One is an Android device, one is a Windows phone device. Which one is the must have device? We're gonna find out in the dogfight, which starts right now. Epic dogfight battle time. Xperia Ion, Nokia Lumia 900, both available at AT&T for a hundred bucks. It's gonna be a challenge, but before we get into that, some love to Best Buy Mobile for hooking us up with phones like the Xperia Ion and the Lumia 900 for use in our One Paul Bandit giveaway game. When you go into Best Buy Mobile, you're gonna walk out without dealing with any rebates. You'll get the money instantly. You don't have to wait eight to 10 weeks. You don't have to fill out any messy paperwork. You don't get those obnoxious debit cards that we all hate because they're hard to spend and it's hard to get down to zero on the debit cards without screwing something up. At Best Buy Mobile, you'll walk out without rebates. Two awesome phones on AT&T, both available now. One's an Android phone, one is a Windows phone, but the cool thing, they both have $100 price points. This is a Sony Xperia Ion. This thing came out pretty recently, actually last Sunday, for $99.99, and it's packing some decent specs. It's great in a lot of ways, but then you look at some of the stuff like the processor, and you're like, well, it's a little bit of a last generation processor, but you're still getting it for 100 bucks. Nokia Lumia 900, arguably a flagship Windows phone device, not just on AT&T, but around all the different carriers, considering AT&T's really doubled down on their Windows phone strategy. This is packing a 1.5 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon S3 processor. It has a 4.5 inch H HD display, a 12 megapixel camera on the back with 1080p HD video recording, a nice shell here, a nice metal shell, 1,900 milliamp hour battery, and it's packing 4G LTE and Android 2.3 with Timescape UI. Sony's uh, user interface is called Timescape. Then you have the Nokia Lumia 900, 1.4 gigahertz single core Snapdragon processor over here, 4.3 inch Super AMOLED display with Nokia's clear black technology, a 1,830 milliamp hour battery that's rated at seven hours of talk time, and then you have Windows Phone 7.5, also known as Mango. Now this is upgradable to Windows Phone 7.8. It'll get it at some point. This one is upgradable to Ice Cream Sandwich. It should get it at some point. Though you'll notice little things, and Sony made a point to mention this. You'll see Folder, for example, and you'll notice that you know I drop email into Folder, drop Play Store into Folder. You'll notice it has the look and feel of Ice Cream Sandwich. So they were quick to say, hey, you know, Ice Cream Sandwich is coming soon. Sorry we didn't launch it with Ice Cream Sandwich, but you have a bunch of benefits out of the gate that are kind of like Ice Cream Sandwich as a result of having the Timescape UI. So let's dive into these, shall we? Both $99.99 and a Lumia 900 has 4G LTE connectivity as well. So for 100 bucks, you get pretty decent specs on both of these devices, but the real win to me is that for 100 bucks, both of these come with LTE capabilities. Out of the gate, you're gonna get some AT&T stuff, and first of all, you're gonna notice that even though this is running Android with Timescape, very different user interfaces here with different bodies. On the right side of the Xperia Ion, you have a power button, volume rocker, physical camera button, which you know how much I love those. You got a uh, flap here with your HDMI port and your micro USB charging port, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on top, and then at the bottom, you have your capacitive buttons, menu, home, back, and then search, and you have small lights underneath all of those. Now, this one's significant for a couple of different reasons. One, it's a high mid-range, low high-end device that's in the U.S. and that's made by Sony. So no longer is it called Sony, uh, Sony Ericsson, rather. It's just Sony, and it's their first 4G LTE device, and they're really bringing the Xperia brand back into the U.S. So maybe we'll see a new adoption. Maybe it won't be all about Apple and Samsung and HTC anymore. Maybe the conversation will go to you know, Sony, or maybe go to Nokia more often. So we'll hear all of these names back in the spotlight again, and not just Apple and Samsung and HTC. SIM card slot here, micro SD card slot, non-removable 1,900 milliamp hour battery there. I'm gonna pop this back on, let's see how well I can do that. Then over here, polycarbonate shell, and it's a polycarbonate paint job through and through, a polycarbonate shell with paint through and through. So when you dent this, you scratch it, it's blue all the way through. It's not just a paint coating on this device, and it's really evident here because I've dropped this uh, phone quite a few times, uh, not just in the time that I've had it, but when I was doing the 30-day uh, trial as well. Obviously, I had it during the 30-day trial, but uh, times I was using it for personal use, times I was using it for review use as well. Dropped it, scratched it, scuffed it, and it's still blue. There's a blue and a white one and a black one. 
and they're all available at AT&T. The white is a little bit glossier. Volume rocker here, power button just below the volume rocker, camera shortcut button, and then up top you have your SIM card slot, which also takes a micro SIM card, micro USB charging port, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the Lumia 900. So obviously very different user interfaces, very different approaches here. I can see this one being a great value proposition because of the Sony ecosystem. You've got Sony uh, with obviously with the PlayStation, the PlayStation 3, the PSP, things like that. You've got a great gaming ecosystem here. Then you have a great ecosystem in terms of movies with Sony's deals, their studio deals, and things like that. I think that's really the value play here is the ecosystem with the Xperia Ion. Over here, great device as well. Feels really nice in the hand. 4.3, a nice sweet spot for a lot of people. Front-facing cameras on both, and it has a nice feel to it. And I like the fact that it stands up. That's... Uh, Pretty cool as well. Windows Phone 7.5, and you can see out of the gate some AT&T stuff here. Not quite up to par in terms of Google Play, in terms of the number of apps in the store, or perhaps the ecosystem, but it's growing and growing quickly, and this has kind of evolved, obviously, off the Zoom platform on the Microsoft side. So out of the gate, you get some AT&T stuff, Code Scanner, My Wireless, Navigator, Radio, UVerse Mobile, all of which can be uninstalled simply by clicking and hitting uninstall. Alternatively, you can put this on the start button, or on the start page, so you'll notice that there are some tiles here. This is your start page and you can organize this how you see fit. And while the customizations aren't quite there in comparison to Android or iOS, just yet, they're coming in Windows Phone 7.8, or should I say, new customizations are coming. You can do things like moving the squares around. You can change the color, so if you don't like this blue, you can change that, you can make the background white. I'd love to see some new additions uh, in future versions, which are obviously coming in 7.8, the ability to resize the squares. I've talked about this forever in Windows Phone. I uh, review videos, dogfights, things like that, and it's coming soon to, uh, to Windows Phone, both 7.8 and 8. Another thing I'd love to see, backgrounds on these devices. See, instead of having white or black on the background, you could have a picture, let's say, so it doesn't just show up on the lock screen. Speaking of lock screens, and I'm kind of jumping around, here's the lock screen over here, and when you get a text message, it'll easily show up on the display. So we'll send that text message back and forth, but out of the gate, AT&T stuff over here, Xbox Live, you get music and videos, which is obviously kind of reminiscent of the Zoom days. You got Tango video calls, YP Mobile over here. Out of the gate, some AT&T stuff as well. Code Scanner, Family Map, Navigator, and then let's see. You've got My AT&T, Messages, YP Mobile over here. Now, unfortunately, I believe most of this stuff can't be uninstalled on this one. I forget because on a lot of their high-end devices, the One X, the Galaxy S3 lately, they've been pretty adamant about not letting you remove the AT&T stuff. But it looks like you can... Yeah, you can on the uh, Xperia Ion. So the stuff can actually be uninstalled over here on the Ion. Cannot be uninstalled on the uh, the Lumia, or excuse me, on the Lumia 900. It can be uninstalled over here and can be uninstalled over here. Not on the higher end devices like the Galaxy S3 or the uh, HTC One X. So this is the uh, Windows Phone, and so we'll say, "Hey there, what's up?" So we're talking to Quick Round Fox. Let's say. Hey there, what's up? This is Sony Ericsson's, or Sony's keyboard rather, the default keyboard, and it's Xperia keyboard, and surprisingly it works relatively well. I've had no issues right when you open it up out of the gate. It'll ask you what kind of typer you are. Are you somebody that relies on quick, uh, you know, auto-correction because you blaze through it? That's clearly me. Or maybe you're somebody that spends a little bit more time typing. You get the option of choosing, and the keyboard will kind of tailor to your personal needs and to the way you use your keyboard. Android keyboard here as well. Keep in mind this is running gingerbread, so it's the stock gingerbread keyboard and not the stock ice cream sandwich keyboard that we've seen on devices like the Galaxy Nexus and more. So Xperia keyboard here. And then, of course, portrait to landscape transitions, nice and fast, but 4.5-inch display, a little bit large, but still a decent, I'd say decent sweet spot for some people. 4.3 is going to fit a little bit better in the hand. So we'll send this, and it's not, hey there, what's up, that's, hey there, what's, ew, but whatever. And you can see it pops up right over here. And then I like this little feature as well. For example, it shows the demo numbers, Brooklyn, New York, so I can see if I don't have that person in there, I can say, oh, somebody's texting me from Brooklyn, who is that? and then I can go from there. Now over here you'll notice little things. They're live tiles, so you'll see when you get a text message, it pops up with a one. I can come in here and take a look at this one uh, as well. 4.3 inch display, stock Windows Phone keyboard here, and I can say the Quick Round Fox is happy. And I can change these words around instantaneously, and this is something I really like. So let's say, I didn't mean to say brown, I meant to say grown. I didn't mean to say happy, I meant to say bally. I meant to say quack instead of quick. 
I can easily come in here and change those words, which is really nice. Then I've got some shortcuts down here, along with these three dots, which effectively, much like Android 4.0, acts as a right-click button. So I can come down here to send, I can go to attach, I can come to speak, or I can delete the thread and get rid of it from there. And then I can drop the phone onto the tripod and just break everything in the hotel room. That'd be really cool, wouldn't it? I'm actually broadcasting from San Francisco because I'm traveling for Google I.O. and for some various meetings, and so I'm out of the office. And that's why the background looks a little bit different. The glass table would be the desk in my office. Uh, so we'll take a look here, or in my hotel room, rather. So we'll come in here to PhoneDog.com and load it up 4G LTE on both of these devices. And we'll go into PhoneDog, and then we'll go over here, load that up. We'll load up PhoneDog.com over here as well. 4.3, 4.5, not going to make a huge difference in terms of the way you browse. Now, if this were something like the Galaxy Note versus the iPhone 4S with, you know, dramatically different displays. I would say, hey, Galaxy Note's gonna be great for those people that browse the web, for those people that watch videos. iPhone's gonna be a little bit better for, for fluidity. Fluidity clearly wins on the Windows Phone side. Now the downside is you don't get flash over here. Still, transition effects nice and fast. I imagine those to continue to get better or continue to stay the same along with Windows Phone 7.8 and Windows Phone 8. Over here, decent, don't get me wrong. Still pinch to zoom, relatively responsive, but you can see a little bit of a lag over here despite the fact that obviously it's running flash. Over here, buttery smooth, although you don't get flash. So you're, you know, you're gonna lose out on not only advertisements on the site, but you're gonna lose out on videos from time to time and things like that, but still very responsive here and then easy access to tabs. Favorites, you can add stuff to favorites, you can pin it to the start. So if I'm a frequent user of Phone Dog, I can pop it right there and have it on the home page and then load up Phone Dog from there and easily access it. I can do something like this, like we'll pin it back to start again with the dog. I'll come down here and I guess I can't do that. Let's go back. I was curious to see how that would work because I wasn't sure if it would let me pin the same page to start again, but we'll go ahead and delete this one just so you can see some of the features of Windows Phone 7. And then likewise over here, I've got my bookmarks, my windows, and you can see it's stock Android look and feel over here with how you got the text, but you don't actually have a physical preview or anything like that. So I'll come back to Internet Explorer, I'll come to Phone Dog, and I'll come down to Pin to Start. And then look, there he is, there's the dog, and I can easily jump back in that way.